Well, good morning. It's April 21st, I think, 2023. Let me see. The date. <laughs> I don't have it on my watch. <laughs> Got my heart rate on there, though. Got a cup of coffee. I think I'm still moving. <laughs> I need my glasses. Oh, today's going to be a busy day. I'm working, continuing to work on the Home Again. This is a quilt along by the Fat Quarter Shop. And I just got an email letting me know that the red colorways are back in stock. So I'll link to those below this video. Such a pretty, pretty quilt. You know, when they first told me about it, they had them in stock. I saw them there, and I don't know why I didn't grab one. But then I thought, well... Red and white wouldn't match a thing in my house. I'm just too practical, I guess. So, oh, if you're new, hi, I'm Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. This is a morning musings, early morning sewing session. And uh, I like this format to uh, work on quilt alongs and things like that where I don't have to do a whole lot of thinking. I just have pieces to put together. All the cutting's been done. A lot of you gave me a lot of positive feedback on the first one I did, so I thought, well, this is a good way to do it. It's very little editing. You get what you get. This is me right out of the sack. <laughs> Nature called about 3.30. I know that's TMI, but I've been awake since then. You know, my brain just kicks in and whew, off to the races. So I laid there until about six and said, all right, I've had enough. I can't see. We have a busy day. Uh, we're taking our motor home and going to Big Bend National Park in way, way, way deep southwest Texas. I'm looking forward to that. That has been um, something I've always wanted to do. So, been here my whole life, never, never been over in that part. It's a five hour drive out to Fort Stockton on I-10. I live just southeast of San Antonio. So we're going to overnight in the RV park in Fort Stockton. And then it's three hours the next day down to Lajitas and Big Bend. Oh, once again, I've got more fabric than I need on the top. We had a big storm last night. There was a whole line of storms that ran. It ended in San Antonio, Texas, and it ran all the way up to Wisconsin. It was crazy. And um, I mean, right across the whole country. We lost power. I unplugged my big machines, the Luminaire and the Ten Needle. When we've got big thunderstorms coming like that, I don't like to play with that. I will always... Um, better safe than sorry. Alright, let's see. Yeah, I think I got it. Oh, I'm off by a stitch on that one. I'm not going to die over that. My life's too short. Oh, our new dog is doing so good. She, um, we've had her for a week. No, that's a lie. I've had her for just over three weeks. Is that right? Um, we lost blue on the 22nd of March. And that was 
like a Tuesday, I think, or a Wednesday. I can't remember. And then by Sunday, we had this new one. Another Australian cattle dog. She's as sweet as she can be. And um, praise Jesus, we're a week with no accidents in the house. So I think we've got it. <laughs> of course, I, I, we have doggy doors all over this house. I don't like to stop what I'm doing to let the dog out. So um, we've had doggy doors for years. And that is just, it just makes life so much easier. That also will stop a lot of behavioral problems because if they're bored, um, they have a tendency to get into mischief. Like yesterday, <laughs> she, she, um, I have, do y'all know I hate plants? <laughs> I hate house plants. I don't mind outdoor plants. I don't like house plants. I, I, I have the brownest thumb known to man. And I actually have four house plants that I have had for some over a decade. And they're just ivies or whatever. And um, one of them's one my husband gave to me when I got my job as a civilian in civil service. It was a congratulations. He, he sent a plant to my office. That was in 2008. I still have that plant. <laughs> anyway, and the others I have <sighs> acquired as we moved offices and people left. You'd move into an office and there'd be a plant there. And then when you leave, nobody else wants the plant. And I have a soft spot. <laughs> for plants that I can't keep grow I don't know. I, I just don't, I don't know. I've tried. I'm pretty good at cactus. <laughs> <laughs> but there was this plant, I moved into this office in 2004, okay? I was a contractor at the time. And uh, I moved into this office and my desk sat against a west wall that had a window and nobody wanted to sit there because I was the contractor at the time so I could I had to sit where they told me well nobody wanted to sit there because in Texas from June until like end of September the west sun is scorching. I mean, it just gets so hot. And I don't mind the heat. It doesn't bother me a bit. I'm like a camel. Don't, I don't care. So I moved into this office. And um, there was this little pot. Okay. It was about this tall. And it had this little, I mean, the dirt was all dry. And it had this little nub of a dried stem stalk about that tall sticking up out of this little dried cracked dead pot of dirt and um i was in that office for months and i kept looking at it and i was like what is that i should throw that away but i like the pot <laughs> so i didn't So then, I guess I'd been sitting there about six months in that in that hot <laughs> spot, <laughs> roasting. And I thought, I wonder if I put water on this, will anything happen? <laughs> Don't you know that plant came back to life? I still have that plant since 2004. <laughs> It's in my kitchen right now. Oh, so I was telling you. So, Frito, my dog. The plants, the, the four house plants 
had been, and that was one of them. That plant is now big. It's very slow growing, but it's, it's big. Anyway, so they were on the floor behind the dining room table. I don't have anywhere to put plants in my house. So a couple of times she has gotten into them and done a little digging, a little excavating. So I haven't gotten on her about it um, because, you know, it's not like when they have an accident where you can point out their scent and say, did you do this and you're bad and put them in solitary. Um, in that instance, she probably doesn't remember digging, you know, because it's not her scent. So I didn't get on her about it, but I just vacuum up the dirt, try to shove the plants back in the pot. <laughs> Wish I didn't have them. And then, um, but there's a plant stand in a little corner right next to those four on the floor. She didn't get into the ones on the floor yesterday. She got into the one on the stand. And I was in the other end of the house. I didn't even hear it. So she's normally right by me. You know, she's all always right next to me. Within a couple feet. And I couldn't find her. So I went looking and looking. I looked all the normal. My other one with three legs. She was out here sleeping in my sewing room. You know, as usual. And, uh... Couldn't find Frito. I went out back, called her name, couldn't find her. Well, I came back in the house. And she was standing there in the dining room. Her little head was down. And her little ears were down. And she was very sorry. And I was like, what is wrong? And then I looked down and I saw. And she had gotten up on the plant stand. And it fell over on her and the ceramic pot that... W the plant my husband gave me was in a pot, in, a, in like a sleeve inside of that ceramic pot. The ceramic pot shattered all over the floor. I don't know why I didn't see it. I was looking for a little black dog. I wasn't looking for pots. <laughs> so, anyway, she knew she had done something wrong. And... um I think it was my animosity toward plants. <laughs> they make me, I don't know. They're just another thing in my life I don't want to have to take care of. So she was sorry. Y'all, I didn't even scold her. I couldn't bring myself to it. She looks so guilty. She was so sorry. Oh, I've got too much on this one now. I have to sew that upside down. But I'm going to go ahead and do these. I think this will be okay. So I got that all cleaned up. Threw that ugly pot away I hated. Picked the plant and the dirt back up and stuck it back in its little sleeve. <laughs> <sighs> Threw the plant stand away. I tried to get rid of that a long time ago. My husband was like, no, if we don't have that, what are we going to put there? I don't want anything there. It's just something I have to vacuum around. Outside of my sewing room, you guys, I'm very simplistic in my needs. <laughs> Anybody else hate plants? Y'all, I just, I don't hate them. Otherwise, I wouldn't keep them. I keep them out of pity. Do you do, and it's a plant, really? I don't know. <laughs> Stupid. I, I've never been able to garden. Ivy, that's all I can grow. Although, although, I went to Walmart um, a couple weeks ago. They had beautiful flowering plants, of course, you know, out in the garden center. 
and I, I wanted to get these beautiful plants because I do have a pot outside my front door and I wanted to replace um, we lost a uh, palm I had grown from a root in a cup had it for years it finally got hardy enough and um, a, we put it out in a pot everything was good and then we had a freeze and that was the end of that it even had a bucket on it, it didn't matter and the pot's too heavy to move so there we go so I went to the garden center at Walmart really oh, I hate that. and uh, I saw these beautiful flowering plants and I thought, oh, I want to have those. Those are so pretty. And then I remembered that I would probably, they would die under my care. So, um, a lot of it is the weather here. It's so hot. Anyway, so then I was, I, I was denying myself some flowering beauty and I saw some marigolds, little yellow marigolds. And I was like, you know, those are pretty hardy. <laughs> I think I can handle those. So I got four, just, oh, whatever, a little pack of four. I picked up two little packs of four of marigolds. Well, my husband put them in the pot. He's got a green thumb. He can think grow, everything grows around him. So he put them in the pot and I, I do water them every day. I water the dogs and then I refill the water pitcher and I water my marigolds. And um, they're beautiful. They look wonderful right outside my door. But, and my next door neighbors are moving. Ugh, we just got them trained. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> moving to Utah, St. George. Anyway, they're moving and she has a pretty green thumb. She has some beautiful, I don't remember what he said, but they're big and they're in pots and would I like them because they can't travel. And I said, of course. So once again, more plants. You know, more than anything, I would love a beautiful flowering garden. I try, but you know, I think you really have to apply yourself to that. And I, that's just not something I listen to the garden shows. I try. <laughs> I try. You have to apply yourself to it. You know, if I was to apply myself to gardening the way I apply myself to sewing, it'd be, I'd have a botanical thing happening out here. I think. So I just stick with my little ivies and feel guilty. They live in the dark. We don't have a lot of light in the house, so... My husband insisted on sunscreens to keep the air conditioning bill down. Which means I live in a cave. <laughs> there are sunscreens in this room too, but I have tons of LED lights in here. Did I, I show you my progress? I've got four of these done. Look at them. Aren't they bright? Wow. Huh? Oh, look. Keith finished his eagle. I'll show you. Can you see it? Barely. Nah, the pole's in the way. Let me roll you over here. Let you look. I'm going to show it on the channel. Let me see if you can... Look at that. Can you see that eagle? That's a paper-pieced eagle from uh, Legit Kits. I'm very proud of him. I put it in our Facebook group and within about 10 minutes it had over 400 likes. I almost fell out of my chair. I was like, oh my gosh. I looked at the Facebook thing. He goes, what? I go, did you see the post I did about your eagle on Facebook? He goes, no. And he looked, he, he was like, oh my gosh. He says, I'm going to enter that into a contest, into a show. I said, yeah, you go right ahead and do that. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, that's not thunder. The garbage truck is outside. Man, they come early. Yep, 6.45. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. So we're gonna pack today. I have grocery pickup at 11.30. Last little bit. And yeah, packing the RV. I did a lot yesterday. I got our clothes all packed up. And most of our clothes. I had to do a little wash. But I got most of our clothes packed up and I got um, my sewing. So I, I packed up Gypsy, my brother NQ3700D, my travel machine. I got that and sewing and embroidery. So I packed up the embroidery arm as well. I'm going to put together, I think, the April Table Topper from Kimberbell. I'm going to try. So I'm taking that and then I'm also taking uh, the Stomp Stomp Roar fabric, uh, all those fat quarters. I chose another pattern instead of Berry Smoothie. I think the one I chose is called Egg Rolls. Is it another Villa Rosa Designs. Neat. It, it calls for 12 fat quarters. So I've got that. Oh, my neighbor's out there pulling his tra trash can up now. That's all pretty much, I've got all the, you know, everything together to keep me busy. I, I don't think I'm going to need to be kept busy. Uh, we plan to take advantage of, um, there's some outdoorsy stuff you can do there. We're not into hiking. Not our thing. Keith has bad knees from being in the Air Force. But there's a place you can go canoeing. Um, there's an observatory out that way I want to go see. And our friends are taking their motorcycles. And we don't have motorcycles anymore. Yes, I used to ride. <laughs> I started out with a Harley Softail. And then I, I, um, my, my second bike was a Street Glide. A Longhorn Orange Street Glide. <laughs> Keith had the Road Glide. We traded him in on a trike. And then we eventually traded in a trike on something. Big four-wheeler for the AT, uh, for the ranch. I, you know, I quit riding back in um, 2011 when my grandson was born, my first grandchild. I got a sense of my own mortality. You know, they always say it's not a matter of if you get hit or wreck, but when. I had been fortunate. We both had been fortunate. With a couple of close calls. My nerves. I just couldn't take it anymore, so. I quit riding, and I was happy to ride behind him on the trike. Now all of our friends have trikes. Uh, I, th I guess it's a natural progression for Harley riders. So... And loved it. Absolutely loved it. It was like riding an ATV. But, you know, it's so hot here. You can really only ride it a few months out of the year. It's, it's, it's not conducive to, I mean, you, you feel like you're in an oven most of the year riding on that thing. And then, truth be told, we had ridden... You know, everybody goes on and on about, oh, riding in the Texas Hill Country is beautiful, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, do it 40 times. Eh, been there, done that. I got other things to do with my life. So that season of our life is past. And I cannot say that I miss it. So then, of course, we're all into RVs. And the same people we biked with are the same people we camp with. We're all military retired. Most of us are Military married to military retired now. Civil service retired as well. One of the people in my group, uh, gosh, I met her in 1998. I was stationed in the Azores. And, um, there are a group of islands in the middle of the Atlantic that belong to Portugal. And I was there in 98, 99. And I met her. So I've known her longer than I've known my husband. I didn't meet him until 2000. She's real big into reads across America. She and her husband Gary make her name's Lori. Make sure that uh, my daddy has a wreath 
on his grave at Fort Sam Houston every year. I just donate. I don't go into that. I don't go do that. Okay. I've got an extra couple of pieces here, so somebody's missing half their star. I gotta see who it is. Okay, there's one. There's two. What time is it? I have been sewing longer than my 20 minutes. So I'm going to wrap this up. I think the next time we get together, I will be adding in the sashing and the cornerstones. Thank you so much for visiting with me. I hope you enjoy your day. You guys go sew something. Bye.